the beauty of screen is it has a visual, or it's a geometric feature that allows you to sort of understand this particular context. So here's our square. But I'm going to do something different this time. Instead of just putting lines in here, circumscribe a circle. On the square. Circle has a, right, has a radius r that has constant length, dimension, and it has a spatial reference and its initial position relative to anything with xy coordinates or trig in a circle, trig function. Mm -hmm. There's a cosine sine relation. Probably one thing. If I take that and I squash that, <coughs> now my circle becomes an ellipse. And more importantly, Let's just get rid of the square for a second. So our circle. Think about a bicycle wheel. Insert that. Everyone, you can think of those lines as paired lines. Start out at 90 degrees to each other for you know, a coordinate reference, pair of perpendicular lines. And after distortion, each of those lines ends up in a new position. I didn't do that, right? Don't do like that. That. Right? Some will be shortened, some will be elongated, and there'll be ang new angles. There'll be a delta angle, change in angle, and changes in length. Those length changes. There's an elongation change and an angle change. And the shear speed. But they vary in this position. So an important point to understand is in screening materials, some orientation, there are certain line pairs of line elements that can look totally undistorted in the sense of angular change, and others are strongly angular distorted, depending on where you are around that ellipsis, or around the circle, where you start on the circle, something can start in one orientation and end in a different orientation, and the rotation is internal by a distortion of this sort. That's one way to think of it. But it varies with orientation, and the beauty, or the magic of strain, so to speak, is that variation in orientation. And when you extend this to three dimensions, it gets worse. In the sense that, that, that we'll talk about that in a moment, a little bit later, qualitatively. But the, you see that as strain increases, the ellipse is drawn out. The more you draw out the ellipse, the greater the amount of distortion is in the material. So that's an increase in strain or bulk strain. But, and so the more you increase this, the, the strain, the more material will rotate or keep moving to the into the, into the distortion. But in three dimensions, we'll talk about this later, but 
But there's an even more ugly quantity is the fact that if you, if this is not an ellipse, it's called an ellipsoid, you can always slice for the geometric features, you can always slice any ellipsoid to make a circle. So even in the most deformed rock in the world, there is theoretically an orientation in which you could cut a rock that was deformed in which it would look undeformed. And uh, so <laughs> it's a peculiar feature, but it is the truth, right? And so we have to we have to deal with those kind of quantities. The main thing is here, I gotta get kind of babbling on here. Uh, I gotta wrap up here in a couple of minutes. Uh, the key point of this then is two things. This hopefully this so-called this is called the strained ellipse. Next time I'll go into detail a little bit more about the strained ellipse. But the importance of the strained ellipse is that it, it's qualitatively illustrates this effect, which I was showing here, where the physical quantities or the components of the strain vary with orientation. And this orientation, if the orientation is relative to the original pairs of lines that are you in your reference frame are like the spokes on a wheel. And these quantities vary systematically as you consider that reference frame. But that, in the same way as vectors, that coordinate reference frame is irrelevant. It's the same physical quantity no matter which one you use. Which reference, you can reference it to this reference frame or that reference frame. You still get that when it comes out. It's just that uglier than that, so you start with the simplest one you could consider in this particular case. Okay, does that make sense? So, so strain is, is variable with orientation, just like anything else, but, but that's, that's what makes this quantity a so-called second-order tensor, is it obeys that rule, that systematic variation. Uh, and I'm about to lose my voice. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, questions, and next time we'll pick some kind of application of this. Uh, we probably had enough of this here. <laughs> Questions? Or are you all just saying, ah, 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 ah. <laughs> <laughs>